Hey everyone, it's Craig from Summit Racing. One of the most important facets of your race car can also be the most confusing when it's time to make a purchase, your vehicle restraint harness. In this video, we'll share a few tips on picking the optimal racing harness for your vehicle and racing style. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our latest videos. A racing harness could go by many names, seat belts, restraints, safety harness, etc. And while it's easy to understand what a racing harness does, and more importantly, why you need one, it can be tough to pick the right one that meets your needs and the guidelines set forth by your race series sanctioning body. Just a simple glance reveals terminology like SFI, Five Point, Anti-Submarine, and beyond. So we created this handy video that will help you pick the right racing harness. So the question now becomes, what kind of harness do you need exactly? Good news. Finding the answer is easy. Just check your race sanctioning body's rule book. We've said this before in other videos, but the rule book isn't vague. It'll spell out exactly what the sanctioning body expects and what standards the harness has to meet. I mean, just look at this example from a recent NHRA rule book. And that's just the first paragraph. The whole section on harness requirements is a lot longer than this short snippet here. You can see that there's mention of belt width and certification date, but it goes on to talk about mounting location and number of belts used in a single restraint too. So again, there's a lot to consider, but the most important part is the SFI rating as it will encompass a lot of those other facets. What is an SFI rating? Since we brought it up, many race sanctioning bodies in the United States use SFI as their benchmark safety standards. You may also encounter FIA ratings, particularly if you're in International Race Series 2. But the same principles we'll talk about for SFI generally relate to FIA 2, so stick around. SFI is an organization that applies ratings to various pieces of safety equipment, both for the vehicle and its driver. You'll commonly see SFI ratings on everything from helmets to transmission bell housings. Using the NHRA rulebook snippet we showed you as an example, it calls for a racing harness to meet SFI 16.1 or 16.5 specifications. These specs apply specifically to racing harnesses and address parameters like the harness construction, buckle design, and number of straps in a single restraint. You can dive into the nuances as deeply as you want, but the big takeaway here is that your restraint should meet those SFI standards. And if it does, you'll see it clearly listed in the restraint spec sheet. As a general rule, if you're into drag racing or most any other motorsport outside of stock car racing, you'll typically be looking for a 16.1 SFI rated harness. Stock car harnesses need to have a 16.5 SFI rating and will often feature a six or seven point harness instead of the more common five point harness. Speaking of five point, since you'll probably hear that phrase a lot, let's dive into the terminology a bit. Point in this context refers to attachment point. If you're doing the math at home, an old school lap belt would be considered a two point harness and the lap shoulder belt combo you see in cars nowadays would be a three point. Make sense? That means a five point harness will attach to five distinct points in a vehicle. Two near the shoulders, two near the hips, and one at the crotch. They'll all meet in the center near the driver's sternum. The one at the crotch is commonly referred to as an anti-submarine belt. That's because in the event of a hard impact, it prevents the wearer from slipping down below the other belts, under the harness, and into danger. We can't think of many racing series that spec out anything less than a five point harness. Proper installation is critical. Follow the harness instructions in your rule book to the letter. Not only does this keep you in compliance with your race sanctioning body, it ensures the race harness will work properly to support your body. And the geometry really matters here, so make sure you know exactly where each strap mounts. It's more than just comfort. In the event of an impact, the wrong or straight geometry can cause spinal compression and a host of other serious issues. There are two common installation types bolt-in and wrap-around. 
Both typically require a roll cage or roll bar for proper installation. If being installed in a vehicle without a cage, reinforcement plates should be welded to the vehicle floor to give the harness a rigid mounting point. A lot of racers prefer a wraparound harness simply because proper mounting and installation won't require you to alter your roll cage or roll bar. The two common buckle types are latch harnesses and cam lock harnesses. And this is another area in which you should consult your rule book. For some race series, a decision will be made for you already. For instance, some dirt tracks won't allow cam locks. On the other hand, FIA events require the use of a cam lock. Otherwise, a choice between a cam lock or latch harness is mainly one of personal preference. Latch harnesses are usually less expensive than cam lock harnesses, and some users find them easier to unbuckle in a hurry. Those in the cam lock camp tend to prefer the simplicity of the familiar seatbelt like ends. Again, check your rule book before committing to either one. We don't want to sound like a broken record here, but in order to choose the right race harness, start by reading your race sanctioning body's rule book. Again, the descriptions won't be vague. The rule book will explain exactly what requirements your safety harness needs to meet in order to compete. And if you have a specific question on race harnesses, just ask a representative from the sanctioning body. They'll more than likely be able to offer a clear, precise answer. If you're still confused, call us. The Summit Racing Tech Team is filled with experts, and a lot of us have spent our fair share of time in race cars too. We'll be happy to help guide you in the right direction.